In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a, a pipe or conduit uh, with fixed lengths as well as a coupling uh, to join the conduits together, electrical conduit. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to go and create our pipes. I have created a, um, a conduit spec over here, but I'm going to show you how we create the pipes first. So once again, you go into your spec editor and we're gonna go create it over there. So now you can either take an existing pipe uh, or you can create one from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new spec. I'm gonna say new conduit. And then I'm going to load up a catalog to be able to grab the components from that. So I'm creating my new spec, and you'll see the level up in my spec will reflect the top over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my catalog edits, I'm going to create a new pipe. So the new components, I'm just going to create one of the components. So this is how you create a component over here. First, I want to make sure that it's in metric, and I want to define the size. So let's make it 50. If you wanted to, say, make it from 20... Uh, to 50 you can do that and we'll take it take each of the different sizes that we have over there and then you'll just uh, pick and choose which ones you want then you decide what type of fitting you want so I want a pipe and then you decide what type of end type you want as well so I want to just take this pipe over here so that's the graphic that it's going to choose um, if you wanted to use an AutoCAD block, you can do that as well, but it's not really necessary for um, for the pipes. If you're just going to be pulling a pipe and it's you know not going to have a fixed length, maybe if you wanted to have a fixed length, you could do that as well. I'm going to go and create, and it creates my pipe for you. So one of the most important things that you need to do is put in the long description. So let's go for graphics sake. This is the long description of the pipe. And you generally want both ends or ports to have the same properties. So I'll select that, nominal units is millimeters, and the end type is PL. If you didn't want to change the end type, you just come in over here and change it to whatever you want to reflect. Um, always good to, you know, compatible standard manufacturer, material, material code. The more information you put in, the more information you can get out when you are um, sort of putting filler materials and stuff like that. Now, from this, we get our sizes. So what you'll notice over here is that you need a matching pipe OD size. Okay, so that's going to be the matching pipe OD when you're going to put another component onto that. And you'll see there it's required for every single size over here. You'll also see there's a long description size. So, you know, maybe what you want to do for that is, you know, this is a long description, normally that's what I do. Or actually, no, you should actually go to the, the, the catalog um, for the manufacturer spec and put in that long description over there but you can say something like this and trying to differentiate between the different um apps over here so 25. on the right hand side on the parameters and it's also where you'll get it from the manufacturer spec um d uh, for the diameter uh your l length and then uh, of minus one so just the um, how it's going to look in your specs. So now I'm, I'm going to go actually just delete all of these, so remove the sides, um, and I'm going to go, so let's say, pipe, fixed length pipe, fixed length pipe, 50. Okay. Now I'm going to put in a national OD of 50 as well. I'm going to say all ports must have the same properties, and this dialog box will pop up. The port property values for the selected components are different. And we'll be overwriting when setting all port properties to be equal because the matching pipe OD for port 2 would have been, please put something in. So it's going to copy that 50 into the other one. And they go, yes. The diameter, let's make it 50. Length can stay at 100 and OF can stay as minus 5. Now, very important when working in your spec editor, I always like to just, you know, save continuously, make sure I save up over here. And once that's done, we can just save it down into the uh, the catalog. So save to catalog, and at the bottom of here, you see there 50. This is the long description of the pipe. 
you'll see the other long descriptions, bold set, bend, din, etc. So it's going to be your, um, as I said, something to get from the manufacturer's spec. Now, once this is done, we want to go and make this to be a, a set length. So if I go to my spec editor over here, you'll see I've got nothing in my new spec. And at the bottom there, uh, let's just go to, this is the long description of the pipe. And I will add to spec. Now, what happens over here is I need to make sure that there is a set length for when this pipe is stored. Because when I want to draw the pipe, it needs to have a set length. And then, as I said, I want to create the coupling that gets put into there. Now, if I just double click on that, you'll notice the different columns over here, material code, long description. So if I put in the manufacturer material, material code, I could have put in there. If there's, you know, 20, 25, 50, you know, if you have a manufacturer here, so say for instance, MGFX, I can then also select it, copy and paste as well. So you do have, see it does have a little bit of um, Excel functionality in it as well. So coming over to where we need to know about where the fixed length is. So if I move into the middle over here, you'll see there I've got a used fixed length and a fixed length over here. Okay, so it doesn't say anything over there. Now, there is a property, and I'll show you where you could have put it if we were still in the catalog editor, but I can double click over here, and I can say it must be 1,500 and use fixed length. Now, if I had more than one pipe component here, I, you know, I could say, you know, for the 50, use fixed length, but maybe for 25 uh, millimeter diameter, I, I will not use fixed length. It must just run a pipe you know, for as long as it needs to be. Okay, so I select on the cave with them. Now, let's see how this looks. So this is my new conduit one, and just once again, go save, and let's go through to our AutoCAD plant. Now, let's go and load up that spec. So go to our pipe specs, right click, copy specs to pipe, to project, and we should have there the new conduit one. So let's open. And then let's just go and make sure that that is the current spec. Okay, so there we go. So we got our new conduit one, select that, and then we can run it. So when I select, you'll notice there that it is placed at 1,500. Okay, so I've created a pipe now, which is um, at 1,500. But now what happens is I want to have a conduit in there. So with that, what we need to do is we need to go and find a conduit in our spec and uh, in our catalog, sorry, um, which will match up with our pipe and then add it to the spec as well. So I've sort of preset this up. Um, and if I go to my conduits over here, you'll notice I've just put in some more so I've got the sockets, I've got some elbows, and I've got my pipe. Now, if I go and edit this spec, you'll see with my pipe, I've got the 20 to 25, and you'll notice I've got a fixed length of 3,000 and use that fixed length as well. Now, what you'll notice over here, this is the very important part, is the end type is PL on both ports. End type, end type. Okay? And if I look at my PVC coupling and look at my end type, threaded female, And threaded female. So this is the important part because when we when we are inside AutoCAD plant, we need to tell AutoCAD plant that those two need to be able to join to each other. And we go to our compound joints for that. Okay, so this is set up over here. I'm going to come back. Now, if I just come through and I create a pipe. Okay, let's make it 10,000. Okay, and you can see it has split it. But you'll notice there, there's no 
a cup, or, you know, sort of sockets over here. So if I grab this coupling over here, you see I can bring it in. And where is one? Okay, there we go. And you'll see that it will then join the pipe over there. Okay, but now, if you're running a pipe that's, you know, sort of 100 meters, you, you don't want to have to go and put this uh, socket in every single time. So how do we automate the process? So to automate the process, what we need to do is we need to go into our project settings and make sure that we set up a, a compound joint. So remember we had the PL on the, the, the pipe side and we had the threaded female. So, so in the project setup, we're going to go to our pipe connection settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a compound joint. So in the compound joint over here, I am going to create a new compound joint. Okay. Let's go to joint. Coupling and joints coupling and on the one end connection I want to have it as PL so that's the pipe and then on the other one I want to have PL as well and the connection components I want it to be a coupling okay and then add now what it does is it adds that joint coupling over there and I can go OK. Now, because we've added it, so it should now add the coupling over here. So let's go and read the pipe. And let's check it. And it hasn't. But notice this over here. There is a little drop down arrow, substitute part. And if I select that, you'll see there I've got the option to put the joint coupling in. OK, so it is present there. It does recognize that I have created that um, that compound joint, but it's not automatically putting it in. So what do we need to change for the automation of that coupling? So going back to my project setup, it's the simple joints is overriding the compound joints. And the one that it is doing is the bat, bat weld joints over here. And because it's looking at BVPL, BVPL, or BVPL, or PL, PL, or PL, BV, it is first picking the simple joint before it's looking at the compound joint. So what I'm going to do is just modify this simple joint over here, and I'm going to remove the PL. Now, this is the simple way of doing it. What I should probably have done, if, was if I'm going to have other pipes that need this, this simple joint over here, I would, I would then maybe create a new um, end name for the end uh, for my connection a new connection name um you know in my autocad plant so let's go do that modify click on ok and let's see what happens now so let's go to pipe run the pipe and if i go and select that you'll notice it's put the coupling in okay so what we've done over here we've created a, a conduit of sorts um, at a fixed length, 3,000. And what we then did, we went into our compound joints and we made sure that the, the compound joint was set up correctly so that we could go and grab that coupling over there. And then we just modified the simple joint so that it automates that coupling instead of me having to go into each one and then substituting out each joint for the coupling. Thank you very much for watching.